Hello, my dear polygons. Did you know that animals also have regional accents? Cows, whales, and even birds can sound different depending on where they're from. Or that your own accent can change over time, a phenomenon called accent drift. Have you ever wondered why you can't shake off that foreign accent no matter how hard you try? It's like your brain saying new sounds? No thank you, we're sticking with the classics. And it's fine, as long as other people understand you, but why do you have an accent in the first place? And can you actually sound like a native speaker? And is it possible to achieve a good accent with zero extra effort? I'm Nikki, and you're watching the Natural Language Channel. Don't forget to like and to subscribe. Now let's dive in to find out more. Your brain is a highly efficient pattern recognizing machine. From the moment you're born, it's bombarded with a continuous flow of auditory, visual, and sensory information, all while trying to make sense of our crazy world. So in order to process this overwhelming input, your brain relies on a mechanism called categorization, or as I'd like to call it, putting chaos into neat little boxes. Fun fact, speech categorization actually begins before birth. Studies show that babies can recognize and even prefer the sound of their mother tongue while still in the womb. So yes, you were already a language nerd before you were even born. When it comes to speech, categorization means identifying which sounds are similar, which are different, and then grouping them into distinct categories for further processing. Think of it like having buckets for each sound. Even though sounds may differ in pitch, duration, timbre, or shape, if a sound is close enough, it's tossed into the corresponding bucket. Your brain's like, eh, close enough, into the ah uh, bucket you go. In speech, these categories are called phonemes. Once your brain matches a sound to a phoneme, it processes it based on the bucket it lands in, like the A bucket or the E bucket. When you're born, these buckets aren't fully developed yet. But as you're exposed to your native language, your brain starts building them. And with every repetition, these buckets get stronger and more rigid. The phenomenon when a person can't distinguish two different phonemes in a foreign language is called phonological deafness. And you may end up singing <laughs> simply because your brain can't tell the difference between la and ra and puts them in the same bucket. The brain is incredibly flexible when it comes to categorizing phonemes. It can even force you to hear what you expect to hear. It's called the McGurk effect. Let me demonstrate how it works. <laughs> English has a bit over 40 phonemes, French is a bit less than 40, and only around 15 of these phonemes overlap. And this is exactly how the distinct French accent comes to life. If you try to speak English, while your brain and your muscles are trained for French, then when you face an unfamiliar English phoneme, you'll naturally replace it with the closest French equivalent, because that's what your brain decides is close enough. It's not just phonemes that reveal a foreign accent. Nothing does it more quickly than misplaced stress. For example, if you say, I'm from Canada, instead of I'm from Canada, it becomes instantly clear that your native language might be French. French is one of the languages with consistent stress rules, where stress almost always falls on the last syllable. So when French speakers learn a new language, they apply this familiar pattern, especially to similar words. Another example is Polish, where stress almost always falls on the second to last syllable. In contrast, its close relative Ukrainian doesn't have any strict stress rules. In Ukrainian, stress can fall on any syllable, and it can even shift within the same word depending on context. While misplaced stress is one of the most noticeable aspects of a foreign accent, it's also one of the easiest to fix. Mastering phonetics requires time and effort. But correcting stress is only a matter of learning where the stress belongs and then practicing it a few times. It's a small adjustment that makes a huge difference. Each language also has its own unique rhythm. For example, in stress-timed languages like English, 
stressed syllables roughly get the same screen time, while unstressed syllables are compressed to fit in between. In syllable time languages like Ukrainian or Spanish, every syllable has approximately the same duration. And of course, there are more exotic rhythmic patterns and everything in between. But if you want your accent to sound more native, it's essential that you pay close attention to the rhythm of the language you're learning and practice imitating it as closely as possible. Rhythm is just as important as individual sounds when it comes to natural sounding speech. So, how do you end up with the worst accent possible? The answer is simple. Learn a language solely through reading and writing without ever being exposed to the natural sounds of that language. While reading, your brain engages in a process called subvocalization, where it hears the text internally. But here's where things start to get problematic. While subvocalizing, your brain defaults to the stress patterns, rhythm, and phonemes of your native language. It places stress where it doesn't belong, and it applies a rhythm that feels natural to you, but not to your target language. And in the best case scenario, you'll end up sounding something like this. We worry about your future because it seems to us hopelessly than pleasureless. It's absolutely possible to imitate a native accent with deliberate practice. This involves honing your phoneme pronunciation skills, mastering the rhythm of the target language, and investing significant time and effort. So with enough dedication, you can sound native, but unless you're an actor or need a flawless accent for professional reasons, there's honestly no need to aim for such perfection. So what's the best way to achieve maximum results with minimal effort? Here at Natural Language, we're strong advocates of a speech-centric approach to language learning. From day one, you should expose yourself to the natural sounds of your target language. The more you listen, the better your brain will adapt to foreign phonemes, developing new buckets to categorize them. Every new material you learn should go through listening first, followed by speaking it out loud. While this approach may not make you sound entirely native, it will help you avoid the most common pronunciation mistakes and significantly improve your accent over time. To help you learn languages with a speech-centric approach, we have developed an app called Natulang. When you learn a new sentence in Natulang, you first hear it spoken with a native accent. This eliminates the possibility of mispronouncing or misplacing stress and simplifies the process of adapting to the rhythmic structure of a foreign language. You can download Natulang using the QR code or by following the link in the description. Now, without extra training, you may not sound completely native, but your accent will sound good enough. And the speech-centric approach makes it easier for you to focus on speaking naturally right from the start. And what tricks do you use to improve your accent and pronunciation? Let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.